Muni Money is sponsored by BAM. Help build America's future with BAM insured Muni Bonds. Municipal bonds have lost about 3.3% since the beginning of the year following concerns of a more aggressive Federal Reserve this year. In fact, last week, investors sold nearly $3 billion of muni funds, the most since the market meltdown in March of 2020. So should investors stay away from this asset class, or is this the time to pick up assets cheaply? For more, I'm joined now by Mike Zizis, the uh, head of U.S. public policy research at Morgan Stanley. Michael, great to have you with us. Thanks for having me. Is there are there bargains out in Muniland at this point, or, or are investors going to wait on the sidelines until market uh, the markets become more stable? Well, I mean, bargains not the word I would use. Mm -hmm. I think it's fair to say that you've had the market correct from very rich levels to very average valuations on a relative basis, on, on a historical basis as well. And credit quality in the market is really good. You made the comparison to March of 2020. In March of 2020, we were looking into the abyss from a credit fundamental perspective. Credit fundamentals in the market are, are likely quite stable for the rest of the year. So um, while bargain's probably not the right word, I think it's fair to say you're getting a fair price here, particularly if you're in a high tax bracket and you need to be owning duration from an asset allocation perspective. The story's still probably less than constructive if you're just looking for a big total or excess return perspective. You probably should wait for uh, wider and cheaper levels. Are there catalysts on the horizon, Michael, that could, uh, you know, get investors back into this market, even though it's just fairly valued as opposed to bargain bargain valuation? Yeah, well, as I think there are obviously cheaper levels that would probably achieve mm -hmm. that. And I think the catalysts for that are the same catalysts you've had for the sell off so far. It's really it's the reversal of two things that were macro tailwinds last year that have become the headwinds. One is Fed policy. And I think specifically, it, it's that the Fed is telling you it needs to maintain its right to change its mind, given a set of very challenging circumstances uh, to, to manage inflation. And that translates to rates volatility. Muni investors tend to flee from rates volatility. Mm -hmm. And then the other is this secular trend of the uh, household excess household savings, which built up over the course of the pandemic, are probably now getting spent down. Um, Two-thirds of that excess household savings accrued to the top 20% of households. Those are muni buyers. So those trends probably mean you're still going to have volatility in the market and probably cheaper levels. And once you get to those levels, you probably get a, re a reversal because, again, credit quality is still pretty good. So I wouldn't let the perfect be the enemy of the good if you're in a high tax bracket now. You could put some money to work. But the skew is probably towards wider levels from here. Yeah, you do say, though, that uh, rates would have to rise another 60 to 100 basis points in order for there to be risk to this market. Is that right? We, we're, we're just about out of time, but I want to get that in yeah. there. Well, those are some very specific risks that are mm -hmm. unique to the muni market. About Again, there could be another level of sell-off that would be deeper if Treasury yields rose to that level and introduced some of those very specific muni structure risks, i.e. call options, bonds having to price to final maturity instead of their calls. Got it. Michael, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. Michael Zizis.